Welcome in everybody to another money making video. Now this video is going to be a bit different and that's because it centers around an entire week of time. The reason I chose a week is to show you how much you can make by using these once a day methods to give yourself a passive little income stream. Now this guide is aimed towards mid to high level accounts, but don't worry if you are a lower level account, this is actually a great goal to try to work towards. There are some methods here that will work for lower level accounts, but they just won't be as effective. Now with that said, let's get into it. I'm here with my dear old dad, and we are going to show you how to make money managing miscellanea. To get the full effect out of this, you're going to need two quests complete, Throne of Miscellanea, and that allows you access to workers so they will gather your supplies and your resources for you so you can collect it whenever you would like. I would highly recommend completing Royal Trouble as well as it allows you access to the farming resources as well as the hardwood resources, which are two of the most profitable. After completing the quests, you'll want to find Advisor Grimm and he's located in the throne room. In order to get this started, we are going to go into Collect, which brings up your approval rating. Um, it allows you to collect the resources that you have been gathering and it also allows you to allocate your resource gathering. So we are going to go into the resource gathering and it brings up this screen right here. So from here, you can actually adjust these sliders. Uh, say you want less mining, you want more wood, uh, easy as that. If you unlock Etceteria, you also get a larger pool of workers that will go and resource gather from you. I would keep mining at full. Coal is the only resource that will be gathered when you select mining and it is the most profitable resource through this method. Occasionally you'll get a few gemstones which is, might be a little bit of a bonus and for the second I would say you kind of have your choice between hardwood trees and the farming patch. Now I have hardwood trees because mahogany logs are the second most profitable resource out of this method. Now you can also choose to do farming the benefit with farming is that you have a chance to roll on a table that would grant you rare seeds, but oftentimes you'll just end up with junk like onion seeds, potato seeds, etc. So we're going to go with the more consistent method and we're going to stick to our mahoganies. The one last thing I would like to mention is the coffers. Now the coffers have a daily maximum pull of 75k a day in order to collect the maximum amount of resources for you which equals out to 525k that you need to have in your coffer for a week. I have a little bit over that as you can see. And now that everything's set up, I am going to show you guys a magic trick. I'm going to snap and it is going to be a week later. And boom, we are back in miscellanea. Now when you get back, the first thing you're going to want to do is check your approval rating via one of the citizens or this handy dandy plugin. Um, and with this active, it does give you a little approval tile that you can move around um, however you'd like and kind of gives you an overlay once you are in the miscellanea area. Um, and to get approval, you want to either one of these skilling areas. So you can either mine up to the north, you can on maple trees, you can rake this herb patch. Um, I have found that teaks are uh, pretty quick and the mahoganies as well. So I usually hop over to the hardwoods and just start um, chopping these until I get 100. The reason you want 100% approval is that that will give you the max roll on your resources whenever you go to collect them. So once you hit a 100% approval rating, one of your subjects is going to tell you to stop doing their job and that's when you know you're good. All right, Advisor Grimm, how are we, sir? How has the kingdom fared? Pretty, 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 pretty good. So when you collect your resources, it actually sends them straight to the bank. So I'll show you guys exactly how much we made and the final price check. And that is miscellanea done. I am going to show you how to set up and get a birdhouse one rolling. If you need something any more in depth, there are plenty of guides out there. Basically, all you're going to need is access to Fossil Island, which is unlocked after the completion of the quest Bone Voyage. 
you are also going to need four birdhouses and you can either craft those yourself or buy them on the grand exchange i personally craft mine but whatever floats your boat whichever you decide make sure to get the highest level birdhouse that your hunter level will allow you to place and seeds of any kind to put in the birdhouses at least 40 of them to make this run the most worth it, you will have to unlock the mushroom transport system. There are teleports here, 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 and here that you'll need to unlock. It's just a little bit of walking, and then after that, you are set up. The method is pretty simple. You just go around and collect and build your birdhouses. Make sure there are seeds in the new ones and wait. So the reason that birdhouses are part of our rotation is that they give you bird's nests, which on top of being almost 4,000 each, they also give you items such as rings, seeds, and sometimes even birds' eggs and clue nests. And once you have your birdhouses set up, they take about an hour to fill completely, and you can do this as many times during the day as you would like. Just to illustrate how much you can make with minimal effort, I am only going to be doing this once per day. Now with our birdhouses set up, it is time to get in some farm runs. Before we go on, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone who has liked, commented, and subscribed to my videos so far. And if you're new around here, I do have a goal of 50 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you stop by the channel, enjoy the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and maybe even a cheeky like. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, so thank you. So to start our herb runs, we are going to need five things. We're going to need seeds, secateurs, compost, a dibber, and a spade. Now, a couple other things I keep in my inventory are teleport and high alk runes, as well as an ecto file. I would also highly recommend utilizing the magic secateurs, which is a crest reward from Fairy Tales Part 1. The reason we want those is because it increases our herb yield by 10%. Now, of course, you can do this with regular secateurs. It will just be a little bit less effective. As for my equipment, I basically have utility teleports and weight reducing clothing. I also have the farmer straw hat. Would recommend if you have any of the farmer's items, I would go ahead and equip those for the little extra bit of experience you'll get through these herb runs. Um, I also have the explorer's ring two, which is from the Lumbridge Diaries. That teleports you just south of Balador to the farming patch that is located there. Cardes Memoirs for Lunch of the Link and the Lunch by the Lankoliums teleport. That'll teleport you northwest of the Hosidius farm patch. Skills Necklace for the Farming Guild and the Arty Cloak 2 for, from the Arty Diaries for Ardor Farm teleport. Um, I would also recommend a steam staff or a mystic steam staff in order to get both fire and water runes uh, if you do not have access to the arty cloak or the explorer's ring water runes will come in handy for the arty teleport as well as the balador teleport and i like having fire runes in that slot just so i can high alk if i'd like to so the farm runs themselves are pretty easy once you get them set up i'm going to be going to seven total herb patches trollheim which is great because it's disease-free, Mauritania, Hosidius, Ardorn, Catherby, Falador, and last but not least, the Farming Guild. So I do have a couple final notes about herb runs. Obviously, they're going to be a little bit RNG dependent. However, utilizing the Magic Secateurs and Super Compost, I was able to average about 55 herbs a day. And using Ranar seeds, that gives me an average profit of just under 90k per run. And honestly, even if you don't have Trollheim, the disease-free patch in Hosidius, or the Farming Guild patch, you're still going to have 5 patches available to you, and you could net around 50k per run. Also, farming is fun. That is all. Next up is going to be herb boxes that are collected from the Nightmare Zone once a day. You're able to purchase 15 a day and they sell for a GE average of 10k each. Here's me opening the herb boxes that we collected throughout the entire week. Now, to get started in the Nightmare Zone, you are going to need to have completed 5 quests out of this list. I'll leave it up for a little bit, pause the video if you need to look back at this for a reference. In addition to that, you are going to need some Nightmare Zone points in order to purchase the herb boxes. 
Now, if you are unfamiliar with the Nightmare Zone, the guys over at Lumbridge Lounge did a really great job putting together a guide for this, so I will leave the link for that in the description. So the method to actually collect your herb boxes every day is relatively simple. You're going to go down to this bottom left selection. I have it under grouping, which is going to bring up your minigame teleports. It may say chat channel, your clan, or view another clan based on what you have active. Um, then you're going to select Nightmare Zone and just teleport on over. Now, once you are here, you're going to go to the rewards chest. We're going to search that. And right here, you have your herb boxes. Now, this will automatically deduct from your reward points, 9,500 each. And we are going to buy 10 and then buy 5. And that will give you your 15 allotted for the day. You cannot buy any more today. Please try again tomorrow. And that's really it click to open them and I will show you what that looks like. Um, I think you saw me opening a bunch. Um, you can open them up and then clean them individually or what is more convenient is you can right click and bank all herb boxes that will open all of them, bank all of the herbs inside. And the only downside to this is they will still be grimy, but that's basically it. So this method just requires you picking up your daily rewards from your diary achievements. The only two diaries we'll be doing this for are Korand and Varric. So there are other diaries that offer daily rewards, but most of them are really good for Ironmen, but not very good for profit. Here are the rewards from the diary tiers, and this is what you can expect for profit from each tier. So the Varric diary rewards are actually battle staffs bought at a discount then turning them into the grand exchange for around 1500 profit each. So I only have the medium tier done of both, so we're going to be collecting on this reward table. What I usually do is just tack them onto the end of my farm run. Now we are going to core rend, and we are going to use our Cardas memoirs to get us to Lovakenge. Now once you're in Lovakenge, just uh, pretty much go straight north until you find this shop with the pickaxe icon. Um, you just claim your dynamite and it's easy as that. For our Varric rewards, we are going to pay Zaf a visit in his superior staff shop. Um, more specifically, we are going to pay his barrel a visit as it will sell us the discounted staffs. And we are good. Now I'm going to show you one bonus method you can use while doing these runs to make yourself a little bit of extra money. And then I'll show you guys how much we were actually able to make throughout the week. So I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I love high alking. Sure, it can be a bit tedious and it can be a bit click intensive, but if you're at your screen anyway, you might as well earn yourself a little extra cash. Dragon hide bodies are always a great bet. Um, they're always typically underneath the high alk value on the grand exchange. But if you are having trouble locating other items to buy, you can always go to Alkmate or the old school RuneScape wiki has a prices page with an alchemy plugin built in. Okay, now that we have our methods, let's finish the week. We are back after a long week of collecting and gathering and skilling, and I am very happy with the results. So this is our total loot here, um, and then if we chuck all of this in, it looks like we are just under 6 mil for the week. And most of, if not all of this, was like completely passive profit. Everything you see here was obtained using one of the methods that I described. We have our mahogany logs, our coal, as well as gems from miscellanea, seeds from bird nests that included seeds, all of our herbs from the nightmare zone, all of our staffs from seven days, all of our dynamite from seven days, uh, our actual bird nests, and last but not least, we have our ranar weeds. 
that is both from the Nightmare Zone herb boxes as well as daily farm runs. Now let's take all this stuff to the Grand Exchange and see what we made for the week. So in the background, I'm going to be selling all of this stuff off, but as I do, I'm going to make like Kyra's doll, and we're going to talk about the numbers. Managing miscellaneous costs us 525,000 total. Planting Ranar seeds cost us 2.1 mil. Buying our battle staffs cost us just under 1.5. Let's just say you bought your birdhouses. It's going to cost around 16k, depending on your hunter level. The Nightmare Zone just took about 3 hours to get the points needed for the entire week. Dynamite was completely free. Now, alking is tricky because it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. I can tell you that I averaged around 60 alks per trip. So if you bring 60 to 75 alks with you, you'll be good to go for the day. And for my blue dragon high bodies, I would have spent just over 2 mil to obtain those for the week with a return of just over 340k. Now, if we were to take all of this and subtract it from our final amount, which is actually going to be just a bit short of what our price tracker showed us, we are going to be left with 1.77 mil. So not bad for a week's work. And honestly, it could be a lot, lot more. I typically do like three to four birdhouse and herb runs a day. So if you factor that in, you could easily make triple that within a week. The bulk of what we actually made money on was our ran our weeds. Uh, that was about a third of everything total. So honestly, if it just boils down. If you do your farm runs, uh, you're going to make money. So guys, that's going to do it for me this week. Um, this has been a really, really fun video to make. I love highlighting these sorts of methods, methods that you can do day in and day out. And it's not a complete grind you know it's 20 minutes 30 minutes of your day to get a little passive income and who couldn't use that at any point in their account so i hope this was helpful i hope it was enjoyable i tried a lot of different editing techniques in this video uh if you liked it let me know if you didn't let me know like comment subscribe if you haven't already and you enjoyed this content if you've made it this far you are truly awesome thank you until next time happy scaping guys